Good day, everyone. Welcome to Agility Academy uh, Leadership Sessions. Uh, today we have got Warren, who is a seasoned release train engineer and self agilist. Uh, in today's session, we are going to cover seven, seven core competencies of business agility and what it takes to build that core capability within organization uh, and whatnot. If you're watching this live on YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn, feel free to say hi, mention your name, city, and feel free to ask questions. So in the next 30 minutes, we are going to do deep dive. Even if you are going to watch this as a recorded session later, feel free to mention your name, city, and any questions you have got related to topic. So this is agenda for today. We are going to explore what is business agility. Business agility is quite a buzzword. Nowadays, you might have heard about it in your organizations, in any meetup, in any leadership group, or perhaps on LinkedIn. Uh, so what is business agility? Why it's important? Why organizations need it? Uh, and if you're talking about business agility, what exactly it mean? What it takes to have that capability within your organization? And that's what we are going to explore at a high level by looking at seven core competencies of business agility in scale agile safe framework. Towards the end, we are going to understand what are the learning opportunities. So if you are leader executive who is leading agile transformation and you are thinking about exploring safe scale agile framework as a way to transform your business, uh, then you will find out what next step you need to do. Take. You'll also find out if you are a professional who is driven to learn more about agile agility and grow or advance their career in agile landscape, you'll also understand what needs to be done next. So stay tuned. Over to you, Warren. Thank you, Sandeep. All right, so uh, what is business agility? In, in today's world, uh, we are living in a digital age of transformation where every business is one way or another that's going to get you know, impacted. So agility is basically you know, the ability to quickly adapt and, and, and reshape yourself, otherwise you know, be left behind. So uh, business agility is important for organizations because if you don't respond, then someone else will and you'll be you know, left behind. So that's the whole purpose of you know, the, the safe version of business agility is being able to respond quickly and adapt quickly. Yeah, just to add on top of what Warren has mentioned, just assume you are running a business and there's a customer who is asking you to deliver a certain solution but you can't do it because you are stuck in your existing system because you don't know who is going to get involved. There are different processes which are not supporting you. So agility is ability where you, know, you are able to quickly capture those market opportunities, quickly respond to any customer needs. And during pandemic, COVID, you, have, you might have seen few organizations have thrived because they have got this flexibility where they can change their direction, where they can leverage their talent within an organization without getting stuck in what is you know, currently existing as their hierarchical structure or bureaucratic processes. So business agility is applying that agile principles, agility at scale across organization. So as you can see in this particular graph, you know, uh, the, the companies have come you know, you know, during the different industrial revolutions. You know, we came from the, the industrial to the age of stream railways, you know, to, to the age of steel and heavy engineering. Where we are today is the age of software and, and digital. It is very important that we understand this because pretty much everything that we are doing is is moving into 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 the digital you know framework, and companies are in one way or another directly or indirectly they are going to be you know in some form or another software related companies, and what 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 happens with that is you know everything has to be done extremely quickly, otherwise the customers will have other options that they will you know go on to, and you are the one who is going to be left behind. Now this. This mindset is applicable not just for the companies, but also for the people who are working in those companies. What happens is, you know, at the end of the day, organizations are not made up of bricks and, and, and foundations per se. The real foundation are the people. So being agile or having that agile mindset, you know, from a people perspective is super critical in order for organizations to, you know, move forward in the agile ways of working and being able to respond quickly and fast. And, and, and come up with, you know, things that consumers want rather than trying to push things that you already have, you know, within, within your you know, offerings. Yeah. And just to add on top of what Warren has mentioned, today, all organizations are driven by software, driven by, you know, their capability to invent, innovate and deliver things quickly. So even if you look at high tech companies or even if you look at the automobile industry, you know, Tesla, BMW, 
uh, all those organizations are as much software organization as they are automobile organization. So you can have a Tesla car, or you can park it in your garage. Next day, after a software update, you can have better security or speed might be increased, right? And that can't be imagined in you know 1970s or 1960s. So in the book called Project to Product by Mick Kirsten, what he has mentioned is now we are living in the age of agile. We are living in the age of software and digital. And here, everything which is powered by software, everything which is powered by IT is going to make huge difference. So another example, you know, in, in the industry, watchmaking industry, there are well established brands, uh, which are there since several decades. But Apple has launched its watch in 2015. And within four years of launching it, Apple became world's most, uh, you know, largest number of watch manufacturing company. So that's what's happening in this age of agile, age of digital where things are changing drastically and new companies are coming and changing the entire landscape. And that's something is quite important to be understood why we need to have agility at the business level. Because if you don't have that, then you will be struggling to adapt to the new market conditions. And as, as Warren mentioned, there will be other companies, new com newcomers, startup organizations will be quickly grab your market share and then move away with your customers. Uh, by the way, if you are watching live or even if you're watching a recorded session, please introduce yourself, mention your name, your city. And if you have got any questions related to business agility, safe, feel free to ask those. So what are these seven core competencies of business agility? Now, lean agile leadership is at, at the foundation. Doesn't matter what processes you have got, what technology you have got. You can buy, you know, a solution which is on cloud. You can buy high tech uh, systems. But at the end of the day, if you don't have people with the right kind of mindset, things are not going to stick. And that's the that's why, in order to make any agile transformation successful, you need to focus on people. People are at the heart of any change. If people are resisting to the change, you can't expect miracles to happen. And that's why. The first important core competency of business agility is lean agile leadership. Leadership which is walking the talk. Leadership which is embracing lean agile mindset. They have a growth mindset where they believe that people need to be trained, people need to be invested in, uh, supported to grow. Uh, leadership which sets example. Now when we talk about lean agile leadership and agile landscape here, transparency, alignment, trust, these things play a crucial role. And that's why it's important that whenever you start your agile transformation, you look at your leaders, managers, executives, people who are in the powerful situation position, and then help them gain those expertise, gain the, that mindset and principles. So throughout this session, we are going to mention what and then how. So what part is what is required, like lean agile leadership, this is something required. How that can be done or supported is by uh, certain courses, programs, like Safe Agilist, which is mentioned on the left side, that two-day program helps you to gain understanding about what is this Lean Agile leadership, what can be done to embrace that mindset as well as principle, irrespective of your job title. Next thing, which is quite important, is having continuous learning culture. Quite often, whenever we interact with other people, we ask, OK, how is the knowledge shared across teams, not just within team? OK, we are talking about there might be other teams, there might be different team members who are doing some excellent work. But if that knowledge is not shared, you're working in silos. You are not leveraging collective uh, wisdom. So that's why another foundational or quite important competency of business agility is are you acting as a learning organization where people are given vision, people are clear about what we need to do, why we need to do. Is there any strong force which is helping people to gain mastery and have that learning as a culture? Do you have brown bag sessions? Do you have lunch and learn, teach and learn sessions where people are coming together? Do you have community of practice? People who share same passion, do they come together, share their learnings, brainstorm different ideas? Do you provide space and time for people to innovate? Innovation doesn't happen by default. You know, if you are just focused on delivering things based on fixed time span, then you will not have any breathing space to innovate. So do you provide that time and space for people to come up with different ideas, experiment and learn with those things? And third, third angle of this particular competency is relentless improvement. So that's one of the most important thing which help you to improve. You know, there's no end. It's like, it's a lifelong journey, journey of innovating. Even organizations are living entities. So 
are you creating an environment where people are running Kaiser and people are uh, coming up with different ideas and then trying opportunities to improve? So that second core competency, again, covered in uh, Safe Agilist course program, which is targeted towards managers and executives. So managers, leaders, executives, they play a crucial role in creating this culture of continuous learning. Warren, do you want to share your insights about team and technical agility? Absolutely. So this is pretty much, you know, where, where all the work gets done. You know, your agile teams will be, you know, other, other people who are actually working on actual solutions. It is important that, you know, your agile teams are, are properly geared, you know, towards, you know, the solution that they are trying to deliver. At the end of the day, that's the value that is going to get delivered you know, to your end users or whoever, you know, your customers are. So hence the reason why, you know, the, the emphasis is more important on the agile team. So for instance, when I first started, I started as a junior product, uh, project manager slash a scrum master, okay? Having that knowledge of what a scrum master should do and that interaction that the scrum master has with the different, you know, stakeholders was imperative in order for me to actually, you know, manage my, my teams. Without that, you know, I was just, you know, doing, you know, basic waterfall methodology, which, which, which didn't give us the results that we wanted. So a Scrum Master is pretty much a coach. He's there to guide, mentor, you know, the teams towards the delivery of the value that they're trying to deliver. And everything is delivered on, a, on an incremental basis as opposed to trying to have phase scale methods and seeing the, the, the value delivered at once at the very end where you can't really change because it's too late. It's gone way too far. So hence the reason why we, we, we focused a lot on the teams because the teams carry that value all the way through. Now the other the component of uh, uh, team and technical agility is quality. Quality is something that has to be embedded in the practices from start to finish. For instance, if you take the old methodology, uh, quality assurance comes either halfway through or towards the latter end of uh, of the of the project. By that time, sometimes it's too late for you to make some some changes. That is why one of the practices that I have adopted is you know. I in, involved all the quality related people, including testers, and even you know, in some cases, solution architects, you know, who, who can speak into what quality looks like. I engage them at the very start. That way, quality is something that is embedded in the team's mindset from start to finish. You can't add quality. Quality has to be there from as a very core of what you are delivering. You can't scale crappy, crappy code. That's like a, a famous thing that SAFE talks about. So quality is something that is the heart of what we do. And, and when you when you in, involve quality as the heart of what you do, that's pretty much what you're gonna to deliver to your customers, a quality product. And that starts with you know, the quality being built into the teams who are delivering that value. The other thing is you know, teams of agile teams. Now, we started off by talking about the agile teams. That's just one team, you know, delivering, you know, a, a certain value, you know, to your end users. But that's usually managed by a scrum master, you know, who can manage maybe one or two teams. But then when you come to teams of uh, agile teams, generally that is managed by a release train engineer who is also known as the chief scrum master. In some organizations, they have different different names. But the agile release uh, train or the agile uh, RTE. He basically manage he or she basically manages you know a team of teams can be even up to you know eight, eight to about fifteen members depending on the organization size. Think of it as a train. To me, each train, each compartment in a train is a team that is delivering value. All of them put together, you're you're delivering you know a, a massive product that's going to the customers. And and how the how the agile t release train engineer manages everything is through cadence and synchronization. That is why it is important that the teams and technical agility is embedded throughout the journey, so that what gets delivered to the end user is exactly what the user wants, as opposed to you trying to push something that you have. This is something that I start, started off by saying at the, at the very early stage as well. So you can't push something that the customer doesn't want. You can't push something that the customer can't use. Why? Because it's not a, a, a quality product. And having said that, you can't push something to the customer when he doesn't want it. That's where the agile release strain comes to, to play, because you're going to market when the, when the, when the consumer needs it. Now, obviously, you know, there, there are three courses that covers this, which is the Safe Scrum Master course, which talks about the, the Agile teams. The advanced, advanced Scrum Master is a little bit more advanced 
you know, because they, they, that course basically talks about the relationship that the Scrum Master would have during the different cadences and the, and the relationship that the, the Scrum Master would have with the release train engineer. And obviously the release train engineer is the chief Scrum Master who is ultimately responsible to make sure that the train delivers the value that it has to deliver. Yeah. So uh, in a nutshell, if you are working in a business, now you need to wear hat of business owner or entrepreneur, right? When you talk about business agility. So if you want to have business agility in your organization, mm -hmm. you can't have that if you don't have right kind of skill set. You don't have that right kind of capability. Just imagine customer is ordering something, customer is ready to pay, but do you have that capability? Do you have what right kind of talent? Do you have what right kind of teams? So team and technical agility talks about building things right. And here, teams, agile teams are cross-functional teams, which has got five to 12 team members. You've got a scrum master who is nothing but your team coach, team leader, product owner who decide what needs to be done based on what customer is sharing. So that is at a team level. It is a building block of any big enterprise. And then you have got a team of teams. So that is called as a release train, where you, you are expected to work together Five to 20 teams, 50 to 125 team members are supposed to work together as a single unit, focusing on a single customer base, delivering a single app solution. So in that case, when you are talking about scaling, here you have a release train engineer who act as a chief scrum master, who is supposed to help support and guide the entire release train or group to deliver things. Uh, in the industry, you will have different titles like end-to-end -end scrum master or group scrum master, Agile delivery manager, Agile program manager. These are the different titles, but essentially that person is responsible to get better outcome out of those five to 12 teams. Just imagine if you are solving a simple problem where you don't need more than 12 people, Agile teams are sufficient. But when you're talking about a big problem, let's say you're launching a new product and to launch a new product in a well-established market, you need someone from marketing, sales, someone who is good in managing customer information, someone is good in creating applications and providing those services or post-sale services. That's when this Agile at Scale or Scale Agile framework comes in picture. So release train is a building block and Agile team is a heartbeat of entire Agile at Scale or Scale Agile enterprise. And that's quite important. And here Scrum Master or Advanced Scrum Master and RT plays crucial role in order to have that success uh, in place. Okay, so we are now uh, moving into another area uh, of the seven core competencies called Agile Product Delivery. Now, the whole focus of Agile Product Delivery is you know, delivering products that actually add value to the customer with the customer being the center of everything that you do. Hence the reason why we call it customer centricity and, and, the, and, the, and the method that we use is called design thinking. So you can't just deliver a product that you think you want, that the customer wants. No, you need to deliver a product that the customer wants and is able to pull when that customer wants. So the method that is generally used is design thinking and, and the double diamond approach is uh, what is used here. From there, when I was talking about RTE, I was talking about, you know, developing cadence, uh, cadence and synchronization. OK, so what that means is everybody has to align to a certain cadence of, of how the products are going to get built. Otherwise, what generally happens is teams will be building things at different, different times. And, and, and all of a sudden, there's a misalignment. Some teams will have to wait for other teams to, you know, you know finish doing their work. And you might miss your market opportunity completely. OK, so that's the meaning of, you know, develop on cadence where everybody's, you know, working to a certain cadence. Generally, you know, cadences are, uh, you know, a, a sprint is two weeks long. That's that's the general recommendation. But whatever the method that you're using, everybody has to develop to the to, to an agreed cadence. You can't have different, different, you know, delivery patterns. The other thing is because the people, you know, the companies are working, uh, working uh, on the different products on cadence, you don't necessarily have to you know, release it into, into the market immediately. Some organizations like my organization, for instance, we can't release anything into the market without having certain compliance you know, that have been documented. Um, for instance, uh, some, some user uh, training materials that have to be uh, published. So what we can do is you can deploy it into production and leave it there, but you can release it to the customer when the demand is ready. 
when the customer is ready to pull that that value so that so that method is usually called you know uh, decoupling you know uh, uh, deploy from from release and and again the reason that you're doing this is because you are having the customer as the core of everything you are doing the customer has to be ready to pull everything that you need the other thing that we we look at you know with agile product delivery is devops operations now devops is a mindset also okay so you will learn a little bit about the kalma approach when when you start uh, uh, studying that the other thing is also the continuous delivery pipeline so some organizations you know they won't waste sitting there you know t- you know uh, uh, checking the code to see whether the code you know can be pulled in in, in through the different different repositories. No, some pe- some organizations have actually you know gone one step ahead, and this is what we're encouraging: is to have a DevOps pipeline, a, a continuous delivery pipeline. Why? Because the time that you invest on just sitting there and you know pulling things in, you can actually be doing you know something else that actually adds value to the to the to the organization. So and and how it works is you know you you do that through continuous exploration. Where you're always exploring for, for 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 new ways and better ways of doing things, and you're continuously integrating your product into uh, whatever you're working into the product that you're working on, and then continuous deployment. Don't let things stack and create bottlenecks. Push it into into deployment, release on demand. So this is the framework. Like I said, the agile product delivery and and the DevOps operations mostly. It's a it's a mindset. You know, you you can you can get stuck in in your old delivery methods or you can actually have certain pipelines built that actually you know keep things moving smoothly in organizations like sandeep and sandeep started this off at the start we are one way or another directly or indirectly you know we are, you know the the world is moving into a software company you can't have software sitting in one place you know without you know pushing it into into production because that will create bottlenecks and then you might miss opportunities and you'll lose value if you lose value there's no point in that completely yeah. The two courses that we offer for that are POPM, which stands for Product Owner, Product Manager, and then a more advanced course is called Agile Product Management, which will go into a lot more detail and a lot more advanced uh, yeah. level of. Thing. So, in this competency, focus is building right thing, right solution in the right market for the right customer, and delivering it at the right time. So if there's a huge demand for certain sort of products, let's say, you know, you are launching a product which will be in a high demand whenever there is uh, uh, Australia Open, right? Now, there's no point in launching that product in the middle of year when we know that Australian Open is there in Jan. Or you are targeting certain customers and there is going to be a lot of demand whenever there is, you know, festive season. So you might want to release it just before festive season rather than few months earlier or few months later. So that's about you know releasing on demand. Here, focus is more about building that core capability where you can understand what customer is looking for, and then under, leveraging your expertise to deliver right outcome, right features, right right capabilities uh, to the right customer. So, product owner, product manager for anyone who is new in this role, who want to grow in a product owner role, focusing on one team, they can they can explore this program. If you are already product owner, product manager, you want to explore more about how to understand the market, how to do, uh, you know, come up with different strategies, how to uh, uh, leverage different design thinking tools like empathy map, customer journey map, user story map, then agile product management advanced course is more uh, suitable for you. Now let's move on. Uh, So enterprise solution delivery. So, so far we have talked about agile teams, five to 12 team members, release train or team of teams where you got five to 12 teams. Now, if you are going to create a big solution, imagine you are working in NASA. Imagine you are launching a new product, launching a new car, okay? Now, in that case, you can't do things by just leveraging expertise within in-house. You can't just do by leveraging, you know, dozen of teams. Here, you might require hundreds of teams. Here, you might want to rely on vendors, suppliers, third-party, you know, uh, companies who are going to help you to build that entire solution. So enterprise solution delivery core competency focuses more on how to coordinate work across multiple vendors, suppliers, multiple release train or team of teams, and then deliver a complex solution, which is going to meet the customer needs. 
Another one is lean portfolio management. When we talk about lean portfolio management, this is more of interest for those who come from the project delivery management background. One of the one of the myth is that oh, we are agile team, we don't need to be governed. No, everyone deserve to be governed. If I'm going to sponsor someone, I need to know where my money is getting invested, right? So lean portfolio management core competency help you to connect your strategy organizational level objectives, OKRs, key results with actual work done by the teams on the ground. So here we are talking about what need to be done to have uh, funding, which is more flexible funding where you are understanding what's happening, what's not happening, how you can have an agile operations governance wherein there is still synchronization between different release trains, value streams, multiple teams which have been funded. Uh, so this core competency talks about challenges faced in a traditional project management world and how those can be tackled by exploring a few advanced concepts like lean budget, participatory budgeting. Uh, it talks about portfolio Kanban through which you can, how you can have lean business cases written, how you can do governance so that you're not spending too much on one particular idea. Uh, and at the same time, you are seeking new ideas and innovate throughout the uh, value delivery. So lean portfolio management, it's an advanced program which focuses more on how to manage entire portfolio. And within that portfolio, we are talking about multiple solution trains, value streams, and multiple uh, release trains. Once you have got all those things in place, in a true sense, you can say that you are going to build to your organizational agility. So when you talk about organizational agility, we are talking about all people, all teams, doesn't matter whether you are marketing, people and culture, or HR, finance, legal, everyone is following agile principles, practices. Even operational teams, they are looking at how value is getting delivered. Are there any opportunities where we can remove that waste and have those lean business operations? Even executives, CFO, CX, uh, uh, CIO, CEO, everyone is following agile mindset growth mindset and they are defining their strategy which is quite agile where at a regular interval you decide you do market sense you find out what how market is heading where it is heading and then you change your strategy so that's organizational agility uh, seventh core competency for business agility so this takes us towards the end of this this session where we have briefly touched on seven core competencies which are required in order for any organization to compete in today's marketplace now, if you are keen to explore one or many of those, feel free to reach out to us by scanning this QR code or visit agilityacademy.com.au. Uh, we have got this global community where we support each other. So what, if you are curious, keen, even if you are leading Agile Transformation, you can reach out to us. Our Agile, Agility Academy consultant experts can guide you, help you. Uh, or if as a, as a professional, if you want to grow in your career or advance your career, uh, you can seek our mentorship. You can network with different, uh, uh, you know, uh, alumni members. Also, you will be given opportunity where you can shadow one of the agile practitioners. If you want to go deeper, what I recommend is that you attend one of one or many courses plus invest your time in reading agile books. So there are several books uh, which are quite important and can can help you to uh, navigate through your journey. You can watch videos. Most importantly, stay connected with like-minded people. So Agility Academy has got this Agile Leadership Learning Series going on. So every Tuesday, we are going to talk about one topic related to Agile at scale, safe scale Agile framework. So next Tuesday, we are going to talk about Agile product delivery in detail, where we'll be looking at product owner, product management, so on and so forth. Uh, after a couple of weeks, we are going to explore lean exploratory management. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, if you are watching there, like this video, uh, subscribe to our uh, Facebook page as well as LinkedIn page and stay connected to get notified. Now, last thing before we wrap up today's session is these are the areas. If you are looking to grow in a certain specific area, if you want to become a scrum master or advanced scrum master or chief scrum master, these are the courses. You can scan QR code or reach out to us on, on WhatsApp or uh, drop us an email. Uh, there are courses specifically targeted towards managers, executives. So Safe Agilist is one of those. Lean Portfolio Management is for PMO leads. And then for product managers, product owners, uh, there's a product owner, product manager, as well as Agile Product Manager course. So these are the different offerings. We are committed towards changing world, and that's what we are here. 
So we believe in empowering organizations and individuals through agility. Uh, we are Scale Agile Bronze Partner, uh, PMI is Authorized Training Partner. So feel free to reach out to me uh, or Warren or anyone within Agility Academy to fast track your journey. That's it for today. Thank you so much and stay tuned. Thank you.